While the whole brain normally participates in communication, most of what we think of as language depends on the left side of our brains. The area for language on the left side is more densely wired and even structured differently than the same area on the right. In 1861, Paul Broca discovered the left hemisphere's role in language. This brain changed the course of neuroscience. It belonged to a stroke patient nicknamed Ta. He was given that name because Ta was all he could say. After Ta died, Paul Broca examined his brain. Because Ta could not speak, Broca concluded the damaged part of the left hemisphere was responsible for language. It's now called Broca's area. Ta's brain was recently rediscovered in a Paris museum. Scientist x-rayed it with a CAT scan. The black area in the left hemisphere is where the damage occurred. We now know that Broca was largely right. Damage to Broca's area does disrupt language. Until his stroke, Charles Landry had a thriving legal practice. At age 45, a blood clot cut off circulation to part of his brain and put an end to his professional career. At the heart of practicing law is a facility for language. Landry's stroke affected both his ability to understand language and his ability to express himself. Contingent reminder is uh, sell it, sign it, deliver it, or anything uh, subject to the contingency. When we talk about language difficulties, we mean problems with either grammar or the choice of words. And if you were listening to him, someone might say, well, his grammar's all right, and even though he takes a long time to find the words, he tends to find them. His difficulties are really all mechanical ones. Uh, he's slow, he's got trouble getting going, but uh, none of this is really language disturbance. Well, I think that problem gets resolved very quickly when we start to examine his, his understanding of language. Do you ever have any trouble with what I say? No. Understanding it? No. no. Uh, well, suppose you wanted to communicate with a person yeah. who was in a distant city. What apparatus would you utilize? Telephone. Very good. All right. And I deliberately made that a, sort of a curious sentence, just to show how well you did. All right. Now let me ask you, do dogs fly? No. No. <laughs> and how about, this, do submarines usually fly? No. Mm -hmm. How about a Zeppelin? Can a Zeppelin fly? Yes. Right. Okay. I couldn't make the question complicated enough in terms of the a fanciness of the vocabulary to throw him off, uh, he immediately understood. And yet, when I produced a sentence that most of us would have thought was about as easy an English phrase as you could uh, create, uh, he failed totally. Do you know what a leopard is? Yeah. you know what a lion is? Yes. Right. So the leopard was killed by the lion. Which animal died? I don't know. Uh... That's hard, is it? No, no, no. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what animal died? I don't know. You don't know what animal died? Right. Obviously, that's got to be an error in, in understanding the grammar. Now, what, there's a very easy way to understand it. Because if you think of those sentences with the grammatical words removed and try to figure out their meaning, you would have the same problem. 
Landry hears all the sounds of the grammatical words, but in his brain, the sentence is processed something like this. He understands only nouns and verbs. This pattern of having this special kind of understanding difficulty, uh, which is confined almost exclusively to these little words, to the grammatical words, and to the endings, uh, is something that we find very frequently in the, uh, in the patient who's got damage to Broca's area. So the thing that's so perplexing in Mr. Landry is that he doesn't have this difficulty in spontaneous speech, he doesn't have this difficulty in repetition, but when we come to the comprehension tests, he has this difficulty in the most dramatic fashion. Broca's discovery was important, but it wasn't long until other investigators discovered additional areas in the left hemisphere that contribute to language. In 1874, the German scientist Karl Wernicke identified a third language area in the left hemisphere. Broca's area in front plays a major role in speech production and grammar. The strip in the middle controls and coordinates movement, but Wernicke's area is involved both in the formation of what is said and in comprehension. When it's damaged, speech seems fluent but doesn't make sense. We now know how we process and repeat words. First, sound travels as nerve impulses to Wernicke's area, where it's analyzed. To Broca's area, where sounds are assembled into sequences. And finally, to the motor cortex, which directs movement and sends signals to the speech muscles. Charles Landry's brain damage has produced difficulties that are fairly typical of patients with damage to Broca's area. From patients like him, we have learned a great deal about how the left hemisphere decodes, processes, and produces language. Oh,